everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Busy Summer Bookworm Club. My name is Eva and I hope you all have been staying safe and finding some fun new stuff to do. Today I'll be reading Professor Wormbog's Gloomy Kerplopus by Mercer Meyer. This is an older book and it used to be my mom's, but I remember really enjoying it during my childhood. One day, Professor Wormbog's pet Kerplopus was very gloomy. He wouldn't eat his bowl of grapes or play fetch the stick. He just lay in his bed inside all day. Oh dear, thought the professor. I had better call Dr. Windbag. Surely he'll know what to do. After all, he is a doctor. Dr. Windbag was just fixing himself a cucumber sandwich when the professor called. He put the sandwich in his hat and rushed right over. Oh my, yes, said the doctor. Your kerplopus certainly does look gloomy. The best thing to do is bathe him in fresh cucumber juice. Call me if he doesn't seem better. Professor Wormbog picked bushels and bushels of cucumbers from his garden. He boiled up a big pot of them and bathed his kerplopus in the juice all night long. In the morning, the kerplopus still wouldn't eat his breakfast or fetch his stick. Dr. Windbag, complained Professor Wormbog, my kerplopus is still very gloomy. Well, well, answered the doctor, who was just about to mow the yard. Take the little fella on a picnic in the country. That'll surely cheer him up. Off they went to the country, with the kerplopus all bundled up so he wouldn't catch a chill. The grass was green and all the flowers were in a bloom, but the kerplopus didn't cheer up. He just sat around and sighed all day. On the way home, they even stopped for burgers and shakes, but it didn't help a bit. In the morning, Dr. Windbag came by. How is our little Kerplopus? He asked. Grr, said the Kerplopus. As you can see, he is no better, said Professor Wormbog. This room is very gloomy, said Dr. Windbag. Why don't you paint it with bright, cheery colors? That'll surely make him feel better. Professor Wormbog got some bright, cheery paint from the cellar. He painted the room, but it did no good. Besides, the fresh paint made the kerplopus sneeze. Time while the paint dried, they took a steamship cruise to the South Pacific. They sipped coconut juice and dined on fresh bananas and pineapples. They danced the hula under the swaying palm trees, but the kerplopus didn't care. Professor Wormbog called Dr. Windbag long distance. I'm worried, he said. Come home at once, replied the doctor. We must kick this problem around. They hurried home and Professor Wormbog rushed his kerplopus to Dr. Windbag's office. I shall take an x-ray, announced the doctor. He turned on the x-ray machine. My goodness, he exclaimed, what can this be? Grabbing the kerplopus by the feet, he shook him upside down. Out fell a big boot. Hmm, said Professor Wormbog. I was wondering where my other boot went. Dr. Windbag gave them a great big bag of peppermint candy canes for being so good. Then Professor Wormbog took his kerplopus home.
That night, they had a wonderful feast with all the good things the Kerplopis loved. He ate everything, and he was very cheerful indeed. That's it for today. I hope you all enjoyed this whimsical little story, and stay tuned for a craft. Today we've got a fairly simple craft, which will be the Kerplopis eating a boot. For this craft, all you're going to need is one sheet of computer paper and some colored pencils or pens and markers of your choice. So, first thing you're going to want to do is fold your computer paper in half like so. Don't crease it too hard because we're going to unfold it at the end and you don't want these lines to show up too much. So, once you've got this, with the flap facing out away from you, you're going to want to fold it again in half. So you're going to have a thin strip of paper just like this. And again, don't crease it too hard. Once you unfold it, it should look something like this. Now, for starting to draw on this paper, you're going to want to have it in a little bit of a different figuration. You're going to want to take this flap and place it over this one so that when you bring this up, there's a flap under here. And when you bring this down, there's another flap here. So again, you're going to want to take it from this full sheet of paper, hold it by the crease down here, and pull that crease up to the middle. You may want some tape to hold it down while you're moving it, but if not, you can just hold it with your hands. Next, with your paper all folded up, you're going to want to draw the Kerplopis. Notice that I used tape to hold it down so it would stay folded the entire time, and also you don't want any designs from the bottom flap going on the top flap or the top flap continuing on to the bottom. You'll see why in just a moment. Next, you're going to want to unfold the paper completely just like this. You should have something that looks like this, and it looks a little odd, but we'll fix it up later. What you want to do now is draw the Kerplopis a mouth in the two, un the two blank sections that you haven't used yet. Make sure that your lines connect to the ones at the top and the bottom. And if you want, you can even add a little boot, just like how he ate the boot. From here, your craft should look a little bit something like this. You start with the folded version, and then you come out to the unfolded version, like this. All that's left to do from here is color. All right, so once you've finished coloring, your folded version should look something like this, and your unfolded version might look something like this. Now, you're free to color it with any colors that you might possibly want, but I tried to keep mine as close to the book as possible. I hope you enjoyed this week's book and craft, and I hope you'll join us next week for another one. Bye, guys. Hope you have a great week.